Thank you so much, Martin. Let's talk a bit about uh, Dutch soaps and their makers. Um, on your intro slide, you had the logo of Go to Titan, Slash to Titan, Good Times, Bad yes. Times. Uh, we talked about the German license version yesterday with a uh, producer, Rainer Wemken. Um, how responsive are the writers and producers in the Netherlands, according to you? Um. Well, as I said, it is a kind of um, learning how to uh, understand their language and their uh, profession. And uh, I remember that um, I was talking to a producer and he said, and that's the, why the turtles and the peacocks, he said, sometimes I have a topical expert or a health communication expert and they want me to, to talk about some health subjects in my storylines, but they start a conversation by saying, well, Actually, I don't like soaps very much myself, so I don't watch television, but would you be so kind and deal with this issue? And then, of course, this is a downer for the, for the producer. So if you come in and say, well, I, I watch your series and I think it's a great job that you do and it's really marvelous that you integrate so many themes. And what about maybe inserting something like uh, a new actual problem as hearing loss? Would it fit with your ideas? So that's one way. And we also have a kind of different system in the Netherlands that there is a possibility in the Netherlands to have a co-production agreement. So we can really create together from scratch on a new drama series, a new uh, series. So I call this E&E &E co-production. Another way is to use an already existing format and to work like in Costa, it was a format that already existed and to introduce some concepts in it. Then I call it inscript participation. And another way is, I would call it now e, &E service. So you facilitate and you help the creative professionals to do their job, to give their research information, to give them shooting locations, like we heard of the Hollywood Health and Society Initiative and some other initiatives. So these three very varieties are possible in the Netherlands. And that might be different with other cultures because we have a very strong public broadcasting system. So our public broadcasters know that they have to have 50% of their broadcasting time dedicated to education and information. So when we talk with each other, then I often say, well, if you have to meet this quota of 50% and you, you, you use entertainment education strategies and formats, then you can just book it as an educational quotum, <coughs> but it's fun. So you can compete with the commercials. So that's one way, and sometimes we, of course, also they need some extra funding for doing extra drama lines. And uh, until recently, it was possible even to uh, collaborate on that level. Uh, uh, and nowadays, it's a little bit in a discussion because they say, OK, the public broadcasters are already paid by our taxes. So why should we invest them to create storylines on public values? But you know, sometimes it's good to have this little incentive so that they really start creating these lines. You've been mentioning your collaborations with Andy Mole. Have you been involved in their organ donor and sperm donor formats uh, as well? You mean this famous one of the BNN, this organ donor show? Or yes. Not? Yes, that one. And mm -hmm. there was some format, uh, I want your sperm, in which young women could pick out their uh, sperm donors. I was not involved in those lines, but I was involved in an organ donation line in Medical Center West. It was a hospital series, and we did research on that, and I, published, I, I wrote about the data also. Um, and um, nowadays you see that there is a, a series was called Onderweg naar Morgen, Unterweg naar Morgen, or that was. Um, and that's had a lot of um, public uh, themes, actual themes in it, because it was a public broadcasting. Uh, and now, good to tie the selected side. Also, they insert, and we 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 work with the scriptwriters. For example, they called us uh, a few months ago, and they said we want someone will die from a kidney problem, but can you help us to find out what type of kidney transplantation it is and what kind of bacteria there is. Uh, so we help them out and we refer them. And we also have, uh, inspired by Hollywood Health and Society, and uh, Marty uh, talked about it, um, we, we have also kind of tips for scripts in the Netherlands. So
So we work with writers uh, to create this tip for scripts. And, uh, and of course, at the day of the soap, they are there. So they know us and they know we don't bite, uh, they were, that we are friendly and that we really respect their jobs and they respect our job because we have also a job. So let's say between this, in these 20 years, we gradually uh, have teared down the wall as uh, the metaphor of Arvin and uh, we, the turtles and the peacocks really became a kind of feathered turtle or a slow peacock, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have questions for Martine? Yes, over there. Thank you, Martin, for this uh, marvelous presentation, also a very personal presentation. Um, I'm working also in health education business in Germany, and my, in my experience, what I found is very difficult is that, I mean, dealing with this political side, uh, which is normally giving money or maybe also a non-governmental um, uh, NGO side, but like Heart Foundation and so on and so on. I mean, these people, in my experience anyway, are uh, sometimes very um, demanding. I'm uh, saying, if we give money to this storyline, so we want uh, a certain amount of content, of our contents in these uh, storylines. And mm -hmm. this is, um, I mean, a source of conflict. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and what, what is your experience with this political side or with this expert side? Yes. Well, I was working for the Netherlands Heart Foundation, so it's yeah. a good example. <laughs> and, um, well, you know, when I was working there, producers came to the Heart Foundation with wonderful ideas of, of, of medical documentaries, and the Heart Foundation spent a lot of money on making documentaries on heart cardiovascular disease. And, um, so a lot of producers came with their ideas. And then I thought, why wouldn't we have our own ideas? Because if we spend money on documentaries, it's only for people who are interested already in this topic. And my job was, and my passion was, to promote a healthy lifestyle, especially to bridge the health inequality gap. Because a lot of people live lo uh, le uh, shorter and have a lesser quality of life because, for several reasons, but one of the reasons is also because they are not uh, used to elaborate so much information. They don't want to really uh, study all kind of health information. They want to have it in an easy way, which fits with their lifestyle, which fit their way of communication. So that's the way I started to, 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 to see how popular formats could be used for health communication. So um, when, um, when you have such an agreement with a producer, then it's really important to know when to come to the front and when to come to the back. So I noticed that you have to have a good briefing in the sense that you have to spend some time together and say, okay, what is the what what would we like to to tell the public? What is of public interest and also what fits with the recent developments? And then the scriptwriter needs to have his own space to make his own drama and storyline. And in the beginning I made my I made a lot of mistakes myself because there was my directors and they wanted to know, okay. What are they doing, Martine? And and when? What is the drama line? And can I see it? And uh, what did you talk about? So I tried to make some reports, and I said, please, can you give me some of your ideas because I need to talk with my directors. And I learned from that that I should not do this. I should really talk with my director and say, okay, you have to back me up. You have to trust me. So I will be there in the briefing, and I will be there in the verification stage. We call it in creative communication theories. But in between, when there is this incubation, when they write a storyline, I don't want to interfere. So uh, I learned a lot from that. And um, so that's why I like to, to, to share these experiences so that others won't make the same mistake as I did in the beginning. And because that would really uh, 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 blur the nice relationship that you can have. OK, one last question from Richard. Hi, uh, Richard Holliman from the Open University. Um, I was thinking of your presentation in the light of a couple of the presentations we had yesterday, particularly from Martin Kaplan, where he gave a nice example where um, the vaccine had been linked to autism, and they had a real concern about that. And at the end of the show, 
they put on a piece of factual information and find out more information from this site. Um, and this kind of links to this idea of how do audiences know when authors writing drama are writing factual scientific information? And how do they know when it's fictional or wrong or incorrect? And that's a really tricky thing mm -hmm. to get right because we don't know how the audience is reading these things, yeah? Um, so while we strive for accuracy, the audiences don't necessarily know when we are being accurate and when we're not. Um, so I was wondering, in, to, to kind of counteract that, there's this notion of doing a docudrama where you actually interleave, you know, very obvious documentary bits with the drama thing. And I was wondering if you'd ever had any experience of doing that in the Netherlands. Yes. Well, um, when you have this co-production and inscript participation relationship, we can go further than only say, here you have the information, do whatever you like. So we go beyond servicing. So, um, for example, um, and of course you don't have to be accurate in every detail. I mean, there are series when you, you see the doctor showing this, um, how do you call it? Uh, um, when X-ray on a top down so and all the doctors say wow this top down you cannot see this but the public doesn't see it but to answer your question many of the series have their medical experts and they are on the credits and when we collaborate them with them it's also on the credits. so the people know that it was in, in collaboration with the Netherlands Heart Foundation or with the SCDs Foundation um, and yes and also the script writers are conscious of their obligation of the, their their, their um, let's, let's say, their responsibility to do it as correct as possible. And they want it. They really want to have the best. So um, if, if they make a mistake and you say, well, um, I mean, if you do it afterwards, then it's, of course, difficult. So that's why we like to be involved in the, in the design criteria. Um, so and then they really are happy that you can help them with the right correction. Um, and of course, you also can uh, um, write some um, uh, some some publications or some uh, you have some interviews that also are read by the public, so they know that the script writers have this good <coughs> consultancy and that they use it. And uh, but of course there, there also can be a mistake. And at the organ donation, we had one problem that the dramatist wanted to show the mother of the the, the son who was dying and who had a new ha heart. Uh, gave his heart to another boy. They wanted to have this idea that the new, the mother of the new boy, knew who was the mother of the old boy, which is in practice not. But because of the evil emotions, and then we saw that the mother of the boy who died, she went to the bed of this young boy, and she pretended that he was still her son. This was tricky because normally you don't have this context. So in this way, it was dramatized. You felt the pain of the mother and the, the, the joy that he lived forever longer in this boy. But of course, she was not allowed to see him. So there was a kind of tricky thing. I, th I think that's a really interesting example, because the one I was thinking of is it, there's, there's a, quite a famous one in the UK, which is about organ donation. But what you have is turtles on screen every Sorry? so often. You have a turtle on screen, <laughs> the scientist. Yeah. Yes, yes. And then you have the drama, and then the turtle comes back. So you, you actually interleave these things. So you have Robert Winston, very famous scientist in the UK, introduces the program. Explain to the viewers what this program is going to be. Explains what the docudrama That's is. That's a nice also way. And, and then at the end of it, there's this call to action to say, OK, we want you to sign up to the organ donation yes. register. Yeah. That's also a possibility, to have a public announcement or introduction. That's what we call it prologue or epilogue. But in a drama format, it's maybe different. Okay, I'm afraid we have to go on, but thank you so much for being here and sharing this with us, and good luck for your further work. Martin Baumann.